Look behind me, I have an amazing cardigan to show you and a little homemade way of replacing twill tape when you don't have any. And also it can just make your garment look pretty. So keep watching to find out all about this amazing cardigan. Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing where every video aims to bring you a lot of practical sewing tips and up close footage so that you can see how I make things and maybe you can apply these techniques sometimes unconventional to your own sewing This beautiful art form gives us so many opportunities to improve ourselves in many aspects and I love sewing and I love sharing it all with you. So if you think that's really cool, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, tap on the bell so you don't miss out when videos go live two to three times a week, usually. Today I want to share with you a cardigan. It's a new pattern released by Itch to Stitch. I have been a pattern tester, so I was supplied the pattern without cost in exchange for sewing up a test muslin wearable and providing fit and instruction feedback so that's what pattern testing is making sure that everything's correct that the product that's going to be released is as best as it can be for all of you so this cardigan has a spanish name and i love it and most of you will not be able to pronounce the double l i'm going to pronounce it to you so you can hear it and i love how this sounds it's a double l and it's called castillo castillo it means castle in spanish and i know the double l is a sound phonetically that is very difficult to pronounce if you mainly are an english speaker so you would probably want to say it like castillo or something like that but castillo castillo beautiful spanish sound and i love it this cardigan is a long line cardigan with slits on both sides i really like that raglan sleeves who does not love a raglan sleeve <laughs> there is a hood that is unlined and a really long neckband that finishes the front all the way around you know to the other side and there are large patch pockets on the front and cuffs on the sleeves so it's a really really nice cardigan style i love the line art when i saw and that's why i applied to test the pattern it's a semi-relaxed fit it's not slouchy it's not tight fitting so i like that as well and it's designed for knit fabrics obviously um, the recommendation suggests 25 to 50 percent stretch horizontal and some vertical stretch also i don't think a really drapey really drapey stretchy thin knit is gonna work well it's gonna just fall lower and look wider if you use that sort of knit i would stick to the recommended fabrics of the 25 to 50 percent stretch medium weight knits um, you can choose french terry sweater knits those thicker type jerseys you know i've chosen a fabric that look when i show you i'm going to ask you to tell me what it is because I see it and I don't really know what it is, but it's really appropriate and it has the right stretch. I wanted to show you another fabric I would have picked that I think is really appropriate had I had enough. Um, if this cardigan didn't have a hood, I probably would have had enough, but I wanna show you. This is a sweater jersey, a sweater knit, medium weight, and it's a bit drapey. It would look different to the one I've made, um, but look, look at the stretch. And it is relatively stable. I'll put the composition of the fabric on the screen. And I've used a similar type sweater knit in a green colorway, Lassie, to make a cardigan. And I really like how it looks and fits and feels on. So if you can find something like this, I will try to link something similar down in the description box. I think it would be amazing for this style. And because it's a solid, you would actually see the raglan sleeves and the patch pockets and the, all the details, you know? By the way, I'm wearing my talent dress that I made the other day, also from Itch to Stitch. I love it, I can't take it off. <laughs> Sizing for this pattern comes from double zero to 20 and that'll go up to a bust of 46 and a hip of 48 inches. As I mentioned, it's a semi-relaxed fit. So you have a bit of room at the bust, about seven inches of positive ease and four inches of positive ease at the hips. I made a size 12 at the bust and blended to the waist and hips to a 14. That, that's the size that I've chosen. I gave you a sneaky peek at the beginning of the video and in the practical footage, I'm gonna show you a lot of things, an overview, a lot of the construction. I really loved sewing it. 
and filming it. <laughs> and there was one notion here, tool tape, that is used to stabilize the neckline. I've taken a picture of this product to local haberdasheries and I just cannot find any. And they look at me and they're like, no. And so, you know, I set out to create my own solution my own homemade solution that turned out really well, accomplishing the same objective, which was to stabilize the neckline. So I'm including that as well. So let's hop into all the practical sewing. These are the main pattern pieces. This one here is the front, it's not cut on the fold. Obviously there is gonna be a band there in the center. That is the back, that one's cut on the fold. And then over there we have sleeves and other bits. These are raglan sleeves and they have a dart there on the top that needs to be sewn for shoulder shaping. Those are patch pockets that will go around the hips and the top bit is interfaced. There is a pattern piece for that. The cuffs do have a shape there, so it's like this, it goes in and then out again and it's to take the shape of your arm, so it's not just a rectangle, I really like that. That piece there is a really long, long band that has a center back seam and this piece there is the hood. So those are all the pieces for this cardigan. This is the top of the raglan sleeves where there's a shoulder dart and this is actually a cutaway dart. Maybe you can see this green pin I'm going to put on the dot there. <laughs> And I'm just going to fold this and then match the raw edges here of this dart. And now this needs to be sewn with a 3 8 seam allowance all the way to the dot. So from the edge of this raw bit right there, that's where you guide the seam allowance from. And then it just goes like all the way down to that dot right there. And this reduces bulk here. That's how the shoulder dart looks after it's been sewn. You can see I've surged that raw edge there and then that's folded. And then it stops there at the tip where there was a dot mark. I'm starting to put the cardigan together and what I have here is the back. It's extended, you know, it was cut on the fold. And I've got the sleeve pieces on top, right sides together. There you can see the shoulder darts I've already sewn. And each of these have a double notch right there. That signifies back. So that's a double notch from the sleeve and this is a double notch from the back, from the arm side. So I've just matched those and it's like a curved seam, both, you know, both sides. So I'm going to do that now. And then I have these bits there of the other side of the raglan sleeves I have a single notch there. And that's where I'm going to put the front piece. This looks extremely crazy, you know, the raglan seams have been sewn there, as you can see those two seams, there's a shoulder seam, that's the back, the other sleeve and those two are the fronts, but it's not time to put this together, it's time to sort out the hood and that comes next. This is the hood, I've got both right sides together, both of the pieces and there's just a curved seam to be sewn and surged. this fabric is really hard to see but what I have here is the hood that I've already sewn you know that center seam of the hood and surged and I've got the hood right sides together with the cardigan on the neckline all the way around now the hood has a center back seam that I've matched to the center back of the cardigan this doesn't have a seam and then along the hood there are three notches there one two three the first one matches one of the seams of the raglan sleeves the next notch matches the shoulder seam right there and then the next one matches the other seam of the raglan sleeves. So it's extremely easy to put together and then you just keep pinning all the way down to the edge. So you have raw edges here on the edge of the hood and the edge of the cardigan. Now if you look at this way, seams of the raglan sleeves need to be pressed in towards the dart. So facing in like that. And that shoulder dart needs to be pressed in the direction of the back. This is the back right here. And so on the other side, I have the same. I have both seams of the raglan sleeves pressed inwards and the shoulder seam 
pressed or folded <laughs> that way. And it's not time to sew at all yet. Everything's just pinned and ready for the next step, which is using twill tape. Now, I've never had twill tape. I can't find it. I've looked for it everywhere. I've even taken pictures of it and taken it to haberdasheries here and they just give me a blank look. But basically, I need a strong type woven material that is not going to stretch. This is not bias tape. It's woven woven. This is a denim. Very, very stable, very stiff. Like it's not going to stretch at all. And I know twill tape has a finished edge there. You know, there's nothing raw with twill tape. But my denim would have raw areas and I don't want fraying to happen. And plus this is actually going to be seen. So the pattern calls for half an inch twill tape. I've just cut a long strip according to the size. I cut it an inch wide and put it through this bias tape maker that has a 12 on the back, which means it's 12 millimeter wide or half an inch wide when it's finished with a double fold. So that's what I have there. The double fold means that the edges here are not gonna fray or anything. In essence, this will be my twill tape. So pretend this is twill tape. Um, I just had to like source and make something to stabilize this neckline, you know, that was an alternative. <laughs> so I have a, a length of my twill tape. It's not twill tape. And I have to fold it in half and mark the middle. I'm just gonna mark the middle there with a chalk. Now, why the twill tape? This is a neckline that's made out of stretch fabric. If we just sold that and left it, it this would start stretching out of shape and looking terrible. So this non-stretch material is going to stabilize this neckline and keep it the correct length for the size that you're making. So I've turned my cardigan the other way. So this is the inside of the cardigan there. You can see all the seams of the sleeves and the darts and everything here facing me. And I'm going to grab my twill tape and start pinning it right at the edge right there, like on the edge. So I'm going to start by pinning like both of the extremes of the neckline here and make sure the center there that I marked with chalk matches the center there that I've got with the pin of the neckline and that matches the center of the hood that's behind there. And I'm just going to pin along all this edge. Okay, I've pinned the length of, of my replacement twill tape onto the neckline there. This is a stretchy fabric and you know, it uh, depends how you've been manipulating. It might look longer than your twill tape, but that's the whole point of the twill tape to keep the length and then when you wear your cardigan, your neckline not falling and slouching everywhere. So you need to make them match and I've done that. Now, if you had your typical twill tape, you would have the edge there and that's where you're gonna sew now on the edge. I'm using this, essentially it's the same. <laughs> Now, depending on the thickness of your knit, this could get super bulky. Um, what I've done is increase my stitch length to So that first step of the twill tape was sewn. In essence, we've stabilized the neckline and sewn the neckline to the hood. So it accomplishes a double thing. Now, there's seam allowance there that needs to be trimmed so that it's narrower than the twill tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that, um, grade this seam allowance down. Okay, you can see that there and the seam allowance has been trimmed too much smaller. Now I can pin this again up on the top edge of the twill tape that's hanging loose right now. You know, if you're using twill tape, good for you. You won't have to deal with what I had to deal with, but in essence, uh, the technique is the same. You'll just be sewing the top edge of your twill tape. In my case, this um, homemade replacement with lightweight denim that I've made. Gray and it matches the color of the inside of this print. See, that's the outside. 
and inside it's grey and I remembered I had a scrap of lightweight grey denim in my scrap bag so you never know these scraps when they're going to come in handy for something so important like this. This is going to have a really nice finish. You know the cardigan here and the hood and that is going to look super pretty you know in my opinion okay so that's pinned on the top look how sturdy this neckline is going to be it's not going to stretch out of shape and become sloppy on your shoulders or anything so i think this is brilliant now i'm just going to go and do a straight stitch there i wasn't filming when i started sewing but maybe you can see right there i've already started sewing this and i'll continue there it's looking super neat <laughs> Like when I wear this, this is going to be seen, this area, and the grey matches the inside and I'm extremely happy with how this turned out. If I had twill tape, I would probably have used the black type, not the white type. And now I still have side seams that need doing. So these are the sleeves here and it's just one continuous stitch basically making sure that the bulk of the seam allowance on the raglan sleeves is facing up or towards the sleeve. It's going to match the same direction this seam has on the top on the neckline so the easiest way would be starting from the bottom going up over the seam and then finishing at the sleeve hem this is the bottom of the side seams you can see there it's wider there there is a dot there so basically this first part will be sewn at three quarters of an inch or two centimeters with a basting stitch only when you get to that dot, then you will change your stitch length to a normal stitch length and then keep sewing and then the seam allowance will magically be 3 eighths of an inch. And then it goes all the way up. These are the seams from the raglan sleeves that are going to be heading towards the sleeve like that and then to the hem. I'm sewing this first section with 3 quarters of an inch seam allowance or 2 centimeters. And the dot is right there so I'm gonna sew up to there okay now I'm gonna reduce my stitch length to what I've been using three and I'm gonna back tack it secure there and then keep going I have to mention that the edges of these seams have already been searched at an earlier stage that's why you haven't me seen me do that but one of the first steps in the process was surging all the edges so they're actually going to be pressed open everywhere this is the bulky bit where the seams of the sleeves are and i really want them to match and i have a pin there that is horizontal and i might increase my stitch length to 3.5 just for this area Okay, so I took that out just before the needle went over it. This is how the inside looks. You can see the bottom has a wider seam allowance there and I've just sort of put it open. Now there was a dot, right? That's where I changed my stitch length to make it official, like the short one. <laughs> so I've put a pin there to reference that. Um, I've actually put the pin like a few millimeters above that point, like maybe a quarter of an inch above that. I need to top stitch and it'll be around there, like that, like a rectangle. From that seam there, it needs to be five eighths of an inch that way and that way. I'm going to be sewing this from the visible side, you know, from the right side. So I've got my pin to reference where to pivot there. A red pin there to mark so you can then in between I just have that basting stitch with a long stitch length you know it comes out pretty easily And there I got to the top. So I've just got some loose little threads to pull out and the slit is super neat there and on the other side. 
what you're looking at is the hem here here is the center front the raw area there and the hem needs to happen at this stage because it has to be done before attaching the band that's going to go on the center front so it needs to be folded up by an inch and i guide myself with this little gadget i don't know what i did before having it but i just go guiding and pinning and i want to use a twin needle and to use a twin needle i have to sew on from this side so i can't really see what i've folded that's why i've quickly just hand basted that down and I'm just gonna quickly sew this uh, with the twin needle so you can see the twin needle there it's caught everything on the other side and then I can just whip the basting stitches out these are the bands they're very long pieces and on one of the short ends you just have to sew it together 3 8 seam allowance and then fold it onto itself right sides together lengthwise so right on the end of the band there you need to sew this closed at 3 8 of an inch and this on both sides and then flip them right sides out and that will finish the band at the bottom <music> so then you just flip it and then that's the bottom of the band already closed and neat and the same with the other one now along the length of these bands there are a series of notches all along the length you'll find a notch there another notch everywhere and you just have to match them up to the neckline now because this is going to be wrong sides together the notches are marked in there so I'm just going to be opening up the fabric, you know, to match them up. But the center back seam obviously is going to go in the center back of the hood. So I'm going to line everything up and pin it. I've got the band pinned all the way around the top, including the hood. Here's the bottom. This is the center front. That's where it's already been hemmed, you know, twin needle right there. And this has been pinned. Now this needs to be sewn on really accurately. So that it's nice and level you go up the band and you'll find the notch there that i've marked in blue right there and then on the band it there's also a notch there that they match there so i've matched that the next notch will match here the seam where the cardigan neckline unites with the hood so on the band there's another notch that is in there blue maybe you can see and then the center back of the band matches the center back of the hood. Of course, you, um, be careful to have the seam going in the same direction as the one here when it's attached to the neckline. And then the band just keeps going around and around to down to the other side. So it's going to be one continuous stitch, a really long stitch at 3 eighths of an inch, stitch and serge. The bottom here that unites the band with the center front of the cardigan that has already been hemmed is super bulky. There's quite a lot of layers here. And I've upped my stitch length to 3.5 and I'm just gonna be careful here. Okay, now that I'm past that really thick area, I'll just reduce my stitch length again. This is, I play with this continuously while I sew, depending what I'm sewing over. the bottom where the band meets the hem on the center front you can see twin needling there and that has been sewn on now this fabric is super thick fluffy uh, I've pressed it and it's still fluffy you know this seam is not gonna lie flat and I'm going to do some top stitching there at a quarter of an inch with the quarter inch foot so I'm going to be putting my fabric there with the bulk here going to the left and just top stitching that down and that's going to help this band lie flat it's it's super bulky you know it's a fabric choice issue and I have already tacked that little bit there that was dangling I tacked that by hand to keep it in place on both sides and now I'm just gonna top stitch <music> It's looking better already you can see how flat it looks now and I'm really happy with this so if you're working with a bulky fabric don't discount top stitching it down you know 
I've got the patch pockets here. The top part of the pocket has been interfaced as per instructions. There's a pattern piece for this interfacing to fuse onto there. And the way these are finished on the top is how I prefer to finish all my pockets. So it's amazing that this is in here. And basically you put them right sides up facing you and then you fold it right sides together there and there is going to be a little mark there where to fold but basically meeting the interface bits there and then just do a straight stitch there at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance because that is the seam allowance for everything in this pattern unless it's something specific and I'm going to do that and then flip that right sides out and then the top corners here are super neat. I love this finish and I do this on wovens too. Okay, so those are sewn and now I can just flip. And then the top is really, really neat. See? And I'm going to, look, it's really hard to press this fabric properly and I'm not going to rely on that to press it and hold it very well. So I'm going to fold it in by 3 eighths of an inch everywhere and hand base that in place. And then I'm going to go and do the rest. I'm top stitching the pockets down, the patch pockets. Um, maybe you can see some red basting stitches there. I did baste them down. I don't think pins were going to help me keep them in place properly. I'm using my quarter inch foot to sew this down. Uh, I'm not sewing right on the edge. The fold I did for these was 3 eighths, so I'm catching the entirety of the pocket there and I think it's going to look nicer this way. Here is my Castillo cardigan. <laughs> Now this fabric, I know it's some double type knit because the top layer, what you see here on the right side of the fabric, uh, tends to separate a little bit from the one inside, but they are like together somehow. I don't know, look at this. And it's like some type of jacquard. It's a gorgeous print and when I saw it, I bought it last year, I believe, and I didn't really know what I was gonna do with it. I knew it was gonna be some type of jacket because it is quite heavy quite heavy quite thick very thick actually <laughs> and just beautiful you know the stretch is really good look let me show you you know stretches horizontally and vertically two-way stretch like I like to call it other people call it four-way stretch and the gray fabric inside I really like now for this style you need to be really mindful of the fabric you choose because the hood is not lined so whatever color is on the wrong side of the fabric, it is going to show. Also, the twill tape is going to show. So if I would have put a white twill tape, I don't think I would have been too happy. I think I would have preferred the black twill tape for this one. I got around the color issues of the tape by making my own out of lightweight gray denim. Just a scrap and I think that looks really neat and really beautiful inside. And when I wear it, you're going to see a little bit of this and I think it matches the inside of the hood. And look at this. Look how stable this is. You know, don't skip the twill tape. Don't think you can just sew the hood onto the neckline and serge it because then you're going to just have this expanding neckline. And when you wear it, everything's going to start slouching and looking really, really sloppy. I love these techniques that are included in these patterns. I think Kenneth is really brilliant in that way in giving you a product that's going to last and is really well constructed and that looks really nice. So I really appreciate this. And actually I've seen twill tape used in one of my son's hoodies. I went to inspect them to see how they were made and I'm like, ah, okay, I get it now. <laughs> I only lengthened mine by one inch here on the short and lengthen line. I actually didn't have more length of fabric to make it any longer than that and that's okay. There are large patch pockets here that I'd sort of disguised because of the print. And you saw me top stitching them down. Look at that flower there. It's just such a striking fabric, in my opinion, of course. <laughs> so two patch pockets there, the little slits on the side. Now, one thing I'll say about these slits, the way the pattern was drafted had a three quarter inch seam allowance here on this slit inside. And then the hem was one inch. So in centimeters, that's two centimeters and two and a half centimeters. So maybe like a quarter of an inch difference. 
Next time I make it, I will adjust the hem length to also have a hem of three quarter inch so that I can do mitered corners there. This is neat, but it's just folded normally, like the hem and then that folded over. It's still very neat, but to take it a step above, I think mitered corners look amazing. But for that, you need the seam allowance of the slit and the hem allowance to be the exact amount, you know? So that's something to consider if you want to try that. I have battled the heat and the elements and styled it in a winter look-ish and have a look at that. This is how the cardigan looks. If I would have had more fabric, I would have lengthened it a little bit more, but I like this length, it's okay. There's a little slit there. And I really like the fit, the length of the cuffs is perfect. I didn't lengthen the arm or do any adjustment there. And I'm gonna show you more up close. Here you can see the slits. I tend to put slits in things and I'm glad this pattern has them there. I think they're cute. Here's another closer look at the cardigan. I really like it. I love this fabric. It feels like I'm wearing a coat more than a cardigan. And the hood bit. Here is the top bit. There is the twill alternative that you can see when you're wearing it. So whatever color you choose, it will be seen there. And I'm glad I had the right color, like gray denim to put in there because the inside is gray. I think it looks really cute and really neat, you know? So the bands are there attached to the hood. And I mean, the hood's for show, let's be honest. I'm never gonna wear the hood, it's just not cold, you know? How do you even wear hoods? But I just love how a hood looks. Hood. And I think it's cute. <laughs> and on the back, like that. It's a nice shape and a nice size of a hood. And you know, I really like it. It's really cool. I'm using a busy print. So you can't really see the raglan seams there. So easy to sew, so easy to fit. Just great, you know? Okay, let's be silly and put it on, although it is sweltering hot and it clashes with my dress. <laughs> I just wanted to end the video with it on. I love the hood, you know, it's not practical for me because it's not cold, but you know, when it does get cold, I think I'm gonna enjoy it and I'm just gonna feel like awesome with a hood on. I don't make things with hoods usually, but look at this, it's awesome. <laughs> As I mentioned, the twill tape was gonna be a little bit visible and there it is, a little bit visible. Anyway, I'm super in love with this cardigan. It's a little bit different to other cardigans I've made and I always look for different details in new patterns that I make. And I really like this style. Raglan sleeves are so easy to sew. I mean, this was a really enjoyable sew. It wasn't difficult at all. And although I spent a few extra minutes making my own twill tape, I think it worked out really well. If you want to give this cardigan a go, go ahead and purchase it through my affiliate link down in the description box. I make a small commission from that sale at no cost to you. It is at an introductory sale price, 20% off, and it'll have a discounted price for about a week. I will write all the details down below. So if you want to get it and make it and just rock your hoodie awesomely, go ahead and make the Castillo cardigan. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope the sewing footage was helpful for you. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like and I will see you very soon with another sewing video. Bye.